Okay, well, I got more news, but I think Harry joined us. Did you join us, Harry? Where's my brother Harry? He's there somewhere. Ah, I saw him. I saw him for a second. There I'm he here. is. Can you hear me? Good. You, yeah. You got anything you want to show us? If I let me put you up here as co-host, I love doing that. There you ah, go. So now the co-host. And you should. Yeah, now you should be able to talk and jump up on a big screen and. Okay. There you are. All right. I want to turn this thing around. And um, can you guys all see Harry? Maybe I need to unpin me. No, yeah, he's good. Is he good? Yeah, he's good. Okay, all right. Now, yeah, uh, how you doing, guys? Um, that's a nice Christmas tree. Okay, um, I got several things tonight. I've got a couple show and tells, and then I have um, three. Um, actually educational, uh, little tips and tricks. So, um, cool. Uh, the first tip and trick will be how to get a, a number off of, um, Lionel steam engine. Uh, the second one will be how to put weight in a cab diesel. And the third will be how to lubricate and spin the wheels on a, passenger car and the, the rollers to reduce frictional drag. So uh, I'm going to do the um, show and tells first. Okay. Okay. Now, here I go. I got, a, I'm looking at a, 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 a camel back here and the, this is actually yours, Steve. Um, no, no kidding. I don't have. Okay. Here's a, this is a cab curtain. This is a brass cab curtain, and it goes right here. And this is another brass cab curtain, and it goes there. I sent out two. I shipped two um, Camelbacks this morning. I finished, and I just got this one weathered and got the boiler painted um, Russian iron. And a, a Camelback had different cab curtains than a regular steam engine because the engineer sat up in here. He was protected. But the fireman was back here on top of the tender deck. And um, he has a special curtains to protect him from the elements. And frankly, um, if you're riding on one of these things going 60, 80 miles an hour on a minus 10, 20 day, uh, you'd have to be right up against that backhead, the heat of this backhead, or you, you wouldn't last very long. And that, uh, I don't know how they did it. And I don't think I'd ever want to have to do it. But, um, okay, so that's a quickie. Now, my second show and tell is a MTH ES44. Now, here's the paint. I'm going to paint 25 of these things. And here's the paint diagram. When I'm going to, these are for the O, o gauge form. Here are the decals here. And then here's the engine here. And uh, it, we got it um, primed only. And um, very nice engine. It very came nice. From came from MTH yeah. Prime? Yes. Um, yeah, it came. Um, this is factory. And um, it came primed, which was good. And then they went and glued the windows in. And I've got to paint that cab red. Okay. Here's a diagram, which means I've got to go in there and actually mask those windows. And that is not going to be easy. But um, other than that, it's a really nice engine. Um, here are the, here's the chassis here. Freaking thing is heavy. Those, those are really nice trucks. You can see they're built up. You can see the brake rigging. Uh, it's, it's not, you know, cast on. It's all hybrid everything that the air tanks are hybrid with uh pipes um very nicely done i was impressed with it okay so that's that show and tell now the next show and tell is are two lionel gensets which uh 
I was instructed to graffiti. So here we go. I graffiti them and weathered them. And um, I got a third engine that I'm doing, but it's a, a switcher. It's going to be lit, uh, painted for Stilton and High Spire. And the decals are supposedly being made right now. Here's a Union Pacific that I, I, I did one of each. This is a, a, a Lionel Gen set. And this was also very nicely done. Most of these. I don't know if anybody has any of these or what they know about them. I've never seen, I never had one on my hand before. So I was, you know, it was kind of cool. Okay, now we're coming up to, I guess we'll do the big, this is a Vision Big Boy. A Vision Big Boy. Okay, now you can see this side does not have a number on it. Was, it used to be 4017. And I have a customer who goes around and buys these things. 4014 is the desirable number. Everybody wants a 4014 because that's the one that's still alive. He'll buy anything he can get, a 4012, a 4017. And then I've got a decal set made up at my graphics guy, um, Highball Graphics. He's got them on his computer. And there is 4017. I'm going to erase that. And I'm going to make it 4014, as well as I'm going to make the, uh, the number boards 4014, the side of the headlight, and then this herald in the front here. Um, it's a turnkey decal set. Very nicely done. Also, the rear of the tender. But the educational thing is I'm going to erase the 4017 as you watch. Okay? So hang on for a second. I'm going to get some lacquer thinner. This is a... A Walgreens cotton tip applicator. Okay, nothing up my sleeve. And I'm going to... I got... Okay. So, here it is now. I got some lacquer thinner on this thing. I'm going to squeeze it a little bit. You don't want to get it too wet. Notice I've got tape on here. And the reason for the tape is because it's covering up that little fine legend. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's hard to see. There it is. Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't want to erase that. I want to keep that there. So here we go. So we take the um, the Q-tip and make strokes back and, and there we go. Here goes the. Here it goes. Move your camera Where's, to the right a little. There you go. Sorry, I'm trying to. There. Can you see it? Yeah. And there goes the 4017 forever. Gone. Blam. Over with. Pull that off. Now all I got to do is slap a decal on there. And uh, that part of the job is done. So, and this can be done with any Lionel black steam engine. Um, I did that with yours. I did those Monons, the little Monon um, saddle tanks. And then I did some. Yeah. Big moan on saddle tanks. And I had to erase them with the same technique. Okay, now, the next thing is I've got a whole hummingbird, a whole Louisville and Nashville hummingbird. I have eight cars and an AB. No, no, an AA. One of the A's is powered, one of them's a dummy. Okay? Why, I can't tell you. Um, the dummy, I had it apart yesterday, and it's complete except for the motors. I mean, those motors can't cost any more than a couple bucks in China. I don't know why they just didn't make them all powered, but I don't, you know, that's, there's also a PC board that's not in the, um, but anyway, this one's, this one's a powered unit. Now, the, I want to make this thing as heavy as possible so that it'll pull these eight cars. And I want to show you the next trick in a minute, but here it is here. And um, what you're seeing here, these are stick-on tire balancing weights. And here's a box of them. Each one weighs a quarter of an ounce. Here's a whole box of them, okay? The 10-pound box. Now, the name of the game is to fill this damn thing full of these weights without hitting any of the the guts inside the um, 
inside the, the engine. Now, I've saved the last weight for demo purposes. So if you'll just hang on for one second, hang with me. I'm going to untake, I'm going to pull the tape off of this thing. It's sticky back tape. Okay. Here's the weight. I just pulled the tape off, so now it's sticky. And I'm going to stick this thing right here. Now, when I do this, okay, I mean, you can see I've got this thing full now. Every time you put a weight on, you want to have the chassis sitting right next to you so that you can make sure you didn't – you got to look at the chassis as you're doing it. Uh, I also put some weight – Here's some weight here inside the chassis. And here's wow. some weight on the, the engineer compartment. I mean, the, the name of the game is to get as much of these little suckers in there as possible. I believe I have about three pounds in there. And that's about all we're going to get on this engine. So every time you do this, you take the engine and you, you fit it. You test fit it onto the – to make sure the thing settles down and there it goes. So – you look at it because it's a mirror image. You're seeing that the engine, you're seeing the, the cab, the uh, the shell upside down, and you want to apply these weights so that they will fill the dead space. Hit this dead space. You can't put it. You can't put it on the roof, or it'll hit the motors, and they the, the little flywheels won't turn. Okay, so you can't do that. But you can stick it. I stuck some in here, and. Um, I mean, it's pretty heavy. I, I, I don't know how to describe it, you know, from, over the computer. But And then I, I did some detail. I weathered this engine as an additional note, and I added wind deflectors. Okay? Diesels had wind deflectors also, as well as steam engines. And then when I I taped the, uh, the windows so that they would have a, the track of the windshield wiper, the grime of the windshield wiper. And then as you, if you look in the little window, you can see two um, window visors. See the little visors in there? EMD did that to their, their engines. So that's the, uh, the second lesson is adding weight to an engine to give it more traction. And that's what a – you can't get much weight into a uh, – hang on, I'm stuck here. You can't get much weight into a, a hood unit. You get some, but you get a lot of weight. I mean, this, I wish you could feel this thing, how heavy this is right now with the additional three pounds of weight in the cab. So I'm hoping this will pull the heck out of his train, both um, certainly on level track, but on, on grades, because he's got, uh, he only has one powered unit and he'll have eight cars behind it. Okay, so now my last demo is over here now the, the name of the game here is to um by the way this one's got a uh the, the, the body of this thing is plastic and it has a um I'm not sure. What, it's probably a tin alloy number board on it. And what, is, what happens to these is that the coefficient of expansion is different for the, the metal than the plastic. And these little guys pop off. Okay. So I'm, I had this happen to a, uh, a, um, a daylight set. And I, they're fastened here. There's a little tiny rivet there and a little tiny rivet there. If those rivets were not used and all they did was glue this thing on there, there wouldn't have been a problem. But the fact is the rivets are at both ends so that when the thing gets warm, this expands faster than the plastic and it makes it bow off. Okay. Just to, if anybody else experiences that problem, the way you solve it is you got to pluck the rivets out. Okay. Here's one rivet here. Got to pluck this little thing out of here. And there's one rivet over there. So you got to pluck those things out and then 
it comes with glue on it and it ought to hold. If it doesn't hold, I use Walther's goo to hold it back on there. Okay. And I'm going to weather this thing. I'm going to weather the roof black. The diaphragms need to be all black. They don't, shouldn't have these silver stripes. So I'm going to, so next, next week I'm going to have, I'll have this car done. But what I want to show is um, how I make these, these wheels, these truck sets, um, friction free. Okay. And uh, I think I am. I had some. Oh, here it is. Okay. So there's two sources of friction on a, on a truck. It is the, the roller and the spindle for the wheel. And these actually roll pretty good. What I have in my hand here, LaBelle 107, which I, I got a random from the hobby shop, with a little needle applicator. Okay. And I'm going to put a little bit of a little bit of oil here, here, a little bit here, here, there. And I'm going to put some on the bearings of these rollers. Now, I have found that sometimes the rollers, the, the little arms that hold the rollers, these little guys right here, are too tight. And what I do is I go in there with a screwdriver and pry them open a little bit. If you can see that. To... So they don't squeeze the roller. So the roller moves more freely. He's, he's got this after to work pretty good. So, so I'm going to put a little bit of grease in here, here, there, there. Okay, now, the next magic trick is the Dremel tool. Now, anybody that wants to use a Dremel tool, listen up here. This is important. Okay. Never use a bare Dremel tool. It's a good way to ruin things. To include the tips of your fingers, blah blah. With the, I always use a. There's the Dremel there hanging there, and I have a flexible shaft here, a hand grip here, and then on the floor right down here I have a foot pedal. Hang on, I think I kicked the wire. I kicked the plug out. Hang on, let me just get the plug back in, and then I'll show you how I do this. Okay, so now we go. Here goes. Here's the Dremel tool. And notice what I have, the, the tip that I have. That is a rubber mandrel that is used for sanding drums. Okay, but I've taken the sanding drum off. So all that's exposed is the rubber, the rubber mandrel. Now I'm going to take this down here to the truck and give this thing a, a, a good spin. Here we go. And there goes that wheel. Now here goes the roller. You only have to do it for 10, 20 seconds. And what, what you're looking for is when you pull the Dremel away, that this thing keeps spinning for a second or two. Then you know it's it's lubricated and, and free to move and, 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 and worn in. The bearing is worn in. Here's the other wheel. Now both wheels are spinning at the same time. So that's how you know you got success, okay? So that one's that one's done. Now I have that one for the example. That that's a spindle type bearing truck. Okay, that means the bearings are here, here, there, and there. They're in the spindles of those wheels. Okay, it's called an outside bearing or a spindle bearing truck. Now here's the uh, the dummy A unit to that Louisville and Nashville set. Now, that that power day unit's got to pull this thing too. So with this one's got to be as free as it can be. So we check the, the rollers first, make sure they're not being squeezed. 
and then I'm going to lubricate this one. Here's my, my, now this one has inside bearings that there's no bearing between the wheel and the, the truck side frame. The bearing is here, there, and then on this wheel, it's here. I'm squeezing a little tiny bit of, of oil out of each one. A little, that's why it's a little tiny. You don't need a lot. Okay. And now we're going to do the, uh, the rollers. Them. And to answer any question, it does not ruin electrical conductivity. You do not lose conductivity. Okay. I put an oil in there. All right, here we go. Now I'm going to spin these. <laughs> the roller. This roller is tight. This is much tighter than the passenger car roller. Watch how fast it stops when I pull the Dremel away. Okay, here it goes. It's going, 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 going. That's a little better. I want it to spin a lot longer than that, though. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, here's the second wheel. Wow. Hang on, I gotta put more oil on this one. Hang on. More oil there. A little more oil there. All right, let's try it again. That's better. Okay. Next roller. You can buy those tire balancing weights. Uh, I go to my mechanic and uh, he'll get them for me wholesale. It might cost 35, 40 bucks to 10 pounds of them. So you can put them in your freight cars, so your, you know, your, your trains don't string line on curves. Do you put them in dummies, Harry? Um, you know, that's, a, that's an excellent question. And in, in two rail, um, guys will, that have really powered up their engines with, you know, fall harbor motors and um, roller bearings and all, you know, big, they will put weight in their tenders historically um, because the tenders are, you know, the first car in the train and um, it, it would tend to string line with a really long train. Now I've been debating whether to put any weight in this guy's B unit. Um, and I think I'm going to put some weight in it because the B units actually about the same weight as the passenger car. Um, I'm going to probably stick some weight in that B unit tomorrow. Um, so there, that's, that's, so I, I've, I've lowered the friction. I mean, it's a shame this thing's not powered. It would only, the motor is already there. All they got to do is stick it in, put the motor board in there and then wire it up the, the power board. But, um, so that's the third lesson is, um, freeing up the wheels for less friction and because uh, you can't reduce the weight. Um, and in fact, I'm going to increase the weight of the passenger car slightly. I'm going to put figures in them. I'll have that. I'll have that done next week. So um, that's that little tip there. So we got um, three tips in summary: um, how to get letters off a Lionel steam engine or numbers. Uh, secondly, does that work? Weight. Does that work on plastic too, Eric? Does that work on plastic too with the lacquer? 
Um, yeah, yes, I use it on plastic. It's very dependent on the way that the factory applies the letters. And I, I'm not privy. Um, it's a little harder to get the letters off a mic engine than it is a Lionel engine for some reason. Although the steam engine. Diesels, it's a toss-up. And um, frankly, what I do with, with my diesels, when I, when I repaint a diesel, is I, I don't take the risk of using chemicals. I will blast it. Okay, here's one here that I repainted Moan on from something else. And I'll blast those things. Here's my blasting cabinet here. I have a um, hmm. aluminum oxide. Um, and I, my experience has been that, um, if you use, if you use the lacquer on a plastic engine and the thing penetrates down through the various layers of paint in a diesel, there's a real good chance you're going to have a mess in your hands. You're going to have, um, everything will start to melt. So I would, I would, I would steer away from that if possible, um, it's, I mean, I know a blast, I mean, a bead, you know, a, a blaster sounds um, aggressive and uh, overkill, but it actually works if you do it right. Keep your pressure down and use an indirect nozzle uh, angle. Um, so that's what, that's a, a long answer to your question. Uh, I wouldn't use, I, I wouldn't that's recommend cool. lacquer. And again, here yeah. are the, okay. here's the, um, these are the weights. This is what, if anyone takes a, takes a shot of that, um, if anyone wants a picture of it, I'll I'll uh, text you a picture of the box tomorrow. If anybody wants to weigh down their stuff, freight cars, engines, whatever. So that is thank you, Harry. My weekly update. Thank thank you, buddy. Thank you. Okay. All right. I'm gonna. And if there's no questions, I'm gonna take off. Okay. Thanks.